to uh, our fourth in the fourth in the series of Meet the Candidates, Matt Salka, uh, Bayfield resident. Thank you for joining us. And the protocol again, have a three minute introduction. And then I have my list of questions, which all the uh, candidates have received in advance. So um, I'll be asking those questions uh, kind of in somewhat random order. And uh, you'll have 90 seconds to answer those with a 90 or with a three minute uh, wrap up. Uh, closing statement. So with that, what time do we have according? It's 11.03. So we, if you're ready, Matt. Yes. You're ready. Well, thank you again for joining us. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, start this morning's uh, meeting. And I'm now all of a sudden realizing where do my 15 second, uh, I have to print a new one, I'll write one. And I'll hold up a 15 second uh, indication when you have that left uh, with your presentation. That works Perfect. for you? That works for me. All right. Well, thank you for joining us and I'll turn it over yes. to you, Matt. Thank you, Jack. And thank you for the Drango Chamber for letting me uh, speak to you, to you all. Um, hello, my name is Matt Salka and I'm running for County Commissioner District 3. My experiences are Mayor of Bayfield, Secretary of La Plata Economic Alliance Board, Planning Commission for the Town of Bayfield, and I currently own two small businesses. From those experiences, I've learned what it takes to lead and govern effectively, and I am confident I'll be an asset to the county. Before I moved to La Plata County, I was a son of a military family. My grandfather served in the Navy during World War II, and my father served in the Navy for 25 years and was the director of utilities for the city of Durango. I attended Fort Lewis College for my information systems degree, and started a small IT business. Several years later, I started a second business in pest control. I have deep roots here and first learned the importance of public service from my father and grandfather. Serving others is my true passion. And you know, I really enjoy my job as mayor. This was a pivotal moment in my life. It's when I realized serving the public to make a difference in their lives is my passion. And this is what I intend to do for the rest of my life. I found myself working less at my two businesses and more for the town of Bayfield. As a nonpartisan mayor, I am known for my ability to look at all sides of an issue and to work compatibly with all citizens, no matter what party affiliation, to reach effective solutions. I will continue those efforts for La Plata County as commissioner. I'm running because I want all residents to have access to great opportunities to support their families and thrive. I will continue these efforts from the moment I'm elected as a La Plata County Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, then I always tell people that uh, if I'm, there's a pause, it's because I got the timer and doing some other things and I'm muting, so. Right. So the first question, We'll go with the land use code. So land use code is in draft form. And do you believe that the public comment should be in person and not via Zoom because of the COVID crisis? And since you may be taking the oath in January, would it be better to adopt the code after you're in office? Good news, that's changing. Chuck Steven, the county manager, is looking into making that possibly possible very soon. Once that change happens, I still feel we need all those options for public engagement, Zoom, online, or in person. We need to make sure the public has every option for public comments. I feel with public comments starting soon and more engagement during the hearing process, I feel we should not delay approving the new code. Great. So kind of along the, the same lines with, you know, with the land use code, um, looking at La Posta Road, are you in favor of development on La Posta Road? Great question. Yes, I am. I am pro-business. There needs to be more options for new and existing businesses. The utilities are there. We just need to bring the tribe, the city, and the county to the table to work out all those details. Great. So along that line with La Posta Road, do you think that the 
uh, city and county should be responsible for putting in the infrastructure, water, sewer, uh, things of that nature, you know, high-speed internet, or do you think that that should be left to the developer? Again, good, good question, because the La Posta Road is important. Depending on La Posta Road deal, I believe there should be an opportunity for everyone to help make a deal. I believe this could gain, help gain more jobs and better business opportunities. This could be beneficial to everyone. I believe there is an opportunity for county, city, and developers to work together for the common goal. Now, along that same line, how do you feel about the county releasing the authority of developing La Posta Road to the city for future development? I'm all about relationships and, and making deals to make sure we, 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 uh, we accomplish those common goals. So for me, it's all negotiable. Just depends on what's brought to the table. Right. Wow, I don't have to hold my 15 second sign. No, I've got, I've got straightforward answers here. You know, I couldn't find the one I printed and I got to get Matt Gomez to come in and allow me to do some things. When I, when I plug in my monitor, it cuts off my audio. <laughs> Matt, you and I are going to talk. Yeah, um, good. <laughs> let me look at the couple things. Oh, so what is your vision to make housing affordability an actual reality in La Plata County? You know, it's a really, really good a question on this one because it's very important to me. As a running resident of La Plata County for 19 years, I work several jobs. My wife, my wife works full time. I know all too well how tight this housing market is. I believe there are ways to create affordable and attainable housing for first time home buyers. And I wanna be a part of that. My experience with Bayfield's Planning Commission has helped me understand there needs to be a better relationship between developers, landowners, and the government. We need to sit down with our many great organizations that deal with these housing problems and find ways to help out our current and future residents. Thank you. Uh, along that line, Colorado's economy has grown rapidly in the recent years, fueled by a strong job market and uh, the quality of life that defines Colorado experience. We've seen ballot proposals to limit growth appear in statewide elections and local communities that would place arbitrary limits on growth that could cripple future economic prosperity and create new growth burdens on the already low inventory of housing available to Colorado consumers. Would you be supportive of limited growth initiatives? Explain your position. This is an easy answer. No, I do not support it. That in the end, the cost will trickle down to the consumers and nothing will be affordable. So I am against it. Okay. I'm looking at, uh, let's see, natural gas. So Senate Bill 19-181 gives local control to oil and gas regulations for siting. And since current code has provisions already for siting, would you look to rewrite that code? And since the state is already are also rewriting the rules for oil and gas operations that protect health, safety, welfare, and the environment, and also wildlife. Will it be in LL be effective in November? Do you see a need for the county staff to rewrite the natural gas land use code? I do not see a need for county staff to rewrite natural gas land use code. In my opinion, it'd be a waste of taxpayers' funds and staff time. Jeff Robbins with the COGCC used to be the town attorney for Bayfield. And so I get a chance to talk to them ever so often, but I don't feel it's a need right now. Okay. So along the lines with um, uh, businesses, uh, what will you do to support all businesses in the county, including agricultural, natural gas, retail, restaurants? Uh, describe something that you would want to implement to be helpful for those struggling sectors. Great question. Again, as a small business owner, I know personally how difficult it is to live in a county where the cost of living increases yearly. We need both larger employers with well-paying jobs, as well as infrastructure that serves our many entrepreneurs cost-effectively. As a leader of the Mill Street Revitalization Committee in Bayfield and the La Plata Economic Alliance, I know the hard work that goes into attracting and retaining businesses. I'm committed, I'm committed to pursuing more opportunities for our community, ensuring that future growth is equitable, 
and benefits both new and longtime residents in rural areas and in the towns and city. We need to help assist new and existing businesses with our many amazing organizations like Region 9, SCAPE, La Plata Economic Alliance to help new and existing businesses flourish. So along that line, where do you see a growth hub um, where we should uh, locate businesses, um, especially those that are manufacturing and need warehouses? Where do you see that next growth to occur? You know, it's for me, uh, you know, as, as the past mayor of Bayfield, you know, it's always about density and location. We need to look into many organizations that can help with those costs so businesses and residential housing can be better attained. When I was on the Planning Commission for Bayfield, we worked on a housing development with higher density lots to help lower the cost per lot. That 52 lot pro project is almost completed and houses are being built. Next phase will be multifamily houses. So, uh, you know, I won't just be looking at La Posta Road, I'll be looking everywhere else. And, uh, you know, as a past mayor, look at Bayfield. Right. Um, so what will you do as a county commissioner to increase the broadband? And uh, we obviously know that that's an essential need. Um, since I took this job, it was on, you know, internet to everybody. Uh, what will you do to help increase broadband in our area? Broadband is super important, even in our communities and the towns and the city, as well as most importantly, the rural areas. But as a mayor of Bayfield, as part of a town broadband master plan, the town has the potential in less than two years with a public private partnership to complete our fiber loop, to get fiber to all the homes and businesses in Bayfield connected. And then the potential for that fiber loop is to extend, expand into the rural communities. There are many opportunities with grant funding and public private partnerships. I'm a true believer in getting high speed internet to our homes and businesses in the county. Look at, uh, oh, all right. So we got to pay for all of this stuff. Um, are you for or against road impact fees imposed by the county? Road impact fees. I am for, but would need to really dive into the logistics. We need to keep our roads maintained. The cost of materials keep rising. I believe in maintaining our infrastructure. What might cost X now may cost triple later. With more growth comes with more road use. But I worry that these costs would get pushed towards the residents, which could drive prices up even more. So yes, I'm for it, but I would like to make sure to look at all sides of this issue as commissioner. Well, on that same line, are you for or against a use tax on vehicles? You know, use tax is, it, it can definitely be a touchy subject, but for use tax on vehicles, could keep buyers in La Plata County instead of going elsewhere. If funds were allocated for roads and the public wanted this on the ballot, I would back this initiative. I believe if you use La Plata County roads, you should help pay to keep them maintained. Now, in the background, so people don't know what the use tax is, right now, if you currently live out in the county and you purchase a vehicle, whether it's Denver, Albuquerque, um, Farmington, somewhere else, you literally can save 2% yeah. when you register your vehicle. So a use tax, and they have it in the city, a use tax, I always say, would level that playing field, and then the money that is collected from use tax could then possibly be used for, you know, rural roads, uh, maintenance painting the roads, especially the dirt roads uh, out in the county. So that's kind of the background on that question if people wonder what a use tax is. Um, would you support deed restrictions or stabilize, stabilization methods? You know, uh, we have that out here in Bayfield, uh, Fox Farms, uh, low income housing, which is super important. Um, it gives opportunities for families to be able to purchase their first home. So for me, this would need to be taken on a case by case basis to see what these those restrictions were were for each case. So yes, I'm definitely willing to entertain that and look into those things. I've seen it work here in Bayfield. Um, so I, I think the opportunity is there to be able to uh, uh, low income and also you know families that uh, you know are working hard in La Plata County and want to purchase a home. So for me, of course, yes, I am more than interested in looking into that. And along the same lines of real estate, would you support legislation or initiative that would create a 
additional taxes or fees on the sale of real estate or properties? You know, real estate on properties, um, I'm against it. My biggest worry would be that um, these costs would just trickle down to the home buyers and just keep, uh, you know, keep making those home prices uh, more expensive for uh, for first time home buyers to be able to afford in Wapata County. So I'm against it. Okay. So here's one going to the staffing at the county. Uh, there's so much turnover at the leadership levels. Do you think it's interesting that we have had turnover at nearly every leadership position except the county attorney's office and that the problems at the uh, county have remained the same for over those two decades? And why do you think that is the case? Here's the questions to ask. Are they getting paid enough? And why are they leaving? When I was mayor, every year we did our best to pay better wages. And if they left, figure out why. I understand employee turnover will happen. And as county commissioner, I look forward to hearing more from county staff, not only department heads. So those are definitely those questions where I'd ask, why are we having these turnovers and investigate? I did it as mayor for Bayfield. Um, I would do the same thing for Lapata County. And then another, uh... Um, staffing question um, that, was, that we received is, uh, is it a conflict for the county's attorney, for the county attorney's husband to be hired in a leadership position as finance director in the county? Right. You know, as a mayor of Bayfield, we see this all the time in a small community. As long as neither one does not report to the other, and this gentleman applied for the job like everyone else, as of right now, I don't believe there is a conflict, but it's one where um, you know, it's one where I just want to look into for sure. I mean, it, it might be something that we might not want to do later on, but for right now, it's happening for the town of Bayfield. And, uh, you know, I, I would definitely be researching this, you know, every time. Okay. Um, so with, I'm going to bounce back a little bit to the uh, land use code. Um, with the land use code, and it's in its draft form, I encourage people to uh, go to the Lapata County website and, you know, read all 300 plus pages to make sure you have all that dialed in. But uh, there was a moratorium that was attached to the uh, implementation of the land use code. And I know the home builders, the Durango Chamber of Commerce, Energy Council, and Durango Association of Realtors all joined together to push back on that and ask them to remove the moratorium. So the question is, are you for or against a moratorium associated with the land use code and why? I'm really glad you asked this question because it's important. I've experienced with this as a mayor of Bayfield and on the planning commission, we implemented our new land use code without considering a moratorium. So I'm against it. I also want to thank the commissioners for listening to the public and not going forward with that. So yes, I am. I, I was against that. Okay. Um, and I, I will ask people if you have a uh, burning question, would like to ask something, you can go ahead and put that in the chat. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll be uh, referring to, uh, I'll screen as they say the questions if we haven't asked something, but uh, please feel free to put that in the chat. Um, so obviously budgets of all governments are declining, especially right now with COVID. Um, and so potential solutions to balance the budgets without raising taxes. So these are yes or no, and I'll let you respond uh, as an overall. Would you consider, yes or no, furlough of employees at the county? Yes, I would. Uh, cut costs with layoffs? Yes, I would. Dissolve or consolidate departments? Yes, depending on the departments, yes. Okay. And then cost share with other governments uh, for communications or human resources, road and bridge, or uh, share fleet maintenance or some law enforcement responsibilities. Yes, and uh, it's already happening here in Bayfield for the law enforcement agencies. We have the Bayfield Marshals uh, going up to uh, uh, county properties uh, to help out. Um, also too, I've met with Chuck Stevens uh, when I was mayor. Uh, to talk about cost sharing with billing inspectors, for instance, or some staff time. And I think there is a possibility. I've kind of got a verbal saying it is possible uh, in the county. So yes, this is definitely something I would be pursuing. I was already pursuing it when I was mayor and I will continuously do that when, as county commissioner. Um, and this one, um, not all the questions I sent, but um, what are some of the key 
uh, economic development uh, goals that the Alliance is working on um, that you can see where the county could support? For me, right now, they're currently doing La Posta Road. Uh, so they've been helping out working with county and the city to uh, kind of be the mediator and, and try to make these relationships uh, work for the common goal. Um, and I think the common goal for, uh, for uh, Economic Alliance, for the city, for the county, uh, would be to find ways for better opportunities for businesses to have another location to go to. Um, and, and so for me, uh, the Economic Alliance is a perfect tool to be able to bridge that gap and be able to uh, get these relationships moving forward to accomplish where we, what we all want, more options and, and, che and cheaper options. Uh, so, uh, so for me, it, they've definitely been working for La Posta Road. And um, I will, even as commissioner, I will be relying on those organizations, the chamber. What can we do? How can I help you? Do you have any concerns? Do you have any questions? Let's work together as a team and be there for one another because we all want jobs. We all want to be paid well and we have, we want to have great opportunities for our citizens in Plata County. So for me, um, the economic Alliance is, is doing a great job right now. And I think we should give them and other organizations more opportunities to be able to accomplish those goals with us, city, county, towns. So um, right now they're doing, they're, they're working hard. Based on that response, I assume you're in favor of continuing the support of the uh, Economic Alliance through the funding. I complete, yes, of course. Uh, I've, I was on it for four years. Um, I, I think it's a great organization and they need, they're out there and they need to be out there to, to help support our businesses and new businesses too as well. So if elected, what will you do to help make the planning process more efficient and easier for people going through the process? Yeah. New Land Use Code is currently working on that process. I will always be out there to listen to residents and businesses on how to keep that permitting process easier. It will be known, it's well known to have the residents annex into the town of Bayfield just to get a project approved faster. I want to make sure that people don't have to do that and stay in the county if they want to and still get their project off the ground. So for me, I'm about public engagement. Listen to the people, listen to the businesses. They're the ones that drive the economy and keep us moving forward to survive in a county that we love. So for me, is listening to the people when this land use code, if it gets passed and when it does, they're, they're gonna go through this. This is a living, breathing document. And we need to make sure that, you know, if there's any hiccups, Let's fix that and let's make it much easier. Right. Um, so are you in fa uh, for or against raising the lodger's tax? Which I think it's currently at 2%. Are you in favor of raising that? I've heard of uh, uh, being raised as much as 4%. You know, lodger's tax, we're a tourist town. Um, I know the Alliance and a couple of organizations have looked into this and for me, there, I think there is a possibility to, to, to raise this. You know, we have a lot of tourists using our roads. Uh, I'm forever grateful to these tourists because they come in, they, they help our businesses out. So for me, yeah, I, I would be because then uh, they can come in here and, and it helps put money back into the pot. But two, three, four, five percent, whatever that is, is something, um, let's talk about it and make sure that we're not uh, pricing ourselves out to have tourists go somewhere else. So yes, I am for it and looking into it for sure. Great. So another question um, that I asked, I think um, one of the other candidates, um, with uh, water being so scarce and uh, you know such a limited resource, a lot of development is being looked at, um, specifically around Elmore's Corner and out on the Florida Mesa area, where they're talking about putting 180 units um, on one project and another one's um, possibly 30. Uh, units for a uh, mobile home park, but they all want to drill wells. Um, are you for more drilling of wells, or do you think infrastructure for water and sewers should be run to those locations before they're allowed to move forward? You know, as a past mayor of Bayfield, the question I always asked, do we have the water? Can we, you know, can we afford more water going somewhere else? 
And so for me, water is gold. It's important. And um, so for these projects that are going in near the Elmore's Corner area, possibly, we need to make sure it's it, the water, we can have it. Because drilling in, I'm worried that with these large projects, drilling for wells will lower that water table and the existing homes and businesses in the surrounding area will not have the adequate water to be able to survive. So for me, you know, these large projects should have their, you know, just like Edgemont, their water facilities to be able to provide that water to them. So for me, my question always is, is there enough water? So the drilling of wells, uh, I'm a little worried about that due to surrounding communities and, and houses that won't be able to have that for them later on. Great, thank you. Um, some of the questions that I asked, um, I think it was Marsha Porter Norton, um, as uh, affiliated uh, with the Democrat Party, what will you be able to do um, so you're not just voting, so to speak, along party lines? You know, you were going to ask the question on what question do I want to ask my, you know, myself, and that was one of them, but I have another one. But for me, I was a nonpartisan mayor. What's best for our community, our county, our towns, and our city? So for me, I will always, at first, what's best for us? So party lines, I, I get it all the time. I live in District 3. It's a rural community out here. The, par the, there, it's, it goes, the party goes into a different direction. But I've already done it. I've worked for board members that are Republican or independent. I'm here to bridge that gap, extend my hand across the table, and make sure let's let's get some stuff done. Let's work on this together. Because right now, in my opinion, I love being a part of La Plata Dems, great organization. But what's best for our community, and how can I help you? So you mentioned that, you know, get stuff done. What's one of the first things that you would like to see uh, if elected that you would like to get done? For me, and I'll say it in my ending speech, is affordable and attainable housing. It's a huge, important, you know, situation here. Um, it's one that uh, I, I really worry about that right now that we have a lot of citizens that cannot find places to live. So for me, I would dive deep into this right away. Mind you, there's a lot more other things that are very important too as well. But for me, it's personal. Uh, I feel for the community. Um, and so for me, it would be attainable and affordable housing. Right. Since you brought it up just a little bit ago, what question haven't I asked? <laughs> so the, the one question that hasn't been asked is, is uh, what I get from a lot of community members is, hey, I'm in District 1, I'm in District 2. I can't, I, I can't vote for you. So the question, the, the answer on that is, is if you are a La Plata County citizen, you have the opportunity to vote for me, no matter what district you're in. So I, it's one of those I've been really, when I reach out and talk to people is, is hey, if you're, you're a La Plata County citizen, you have that opportunity to vote for me. So, for me, so I, I definitely, I try to get that message sent out to everyone and let them know you have options. And uh, just because you're in district one or two, you still have that opportunity to vote for me. Wonderful. Um, I can't believe I've gone through all my questions. That's we are. I, hey, I'm a, we're on fire. Maybe I should hold <laughs> myself, right? Um, well, I'm going to, you know, unless there's a, a burning question, I haven't seen anything else pop up in the chat. Now, one question I asked is about the emergency management program. Um, what are your thoughts on the emergency management program, especially right now with the pandemic and the uh, fires that are occurring? Very important. We, you know, we have fires, the pandemic, um, dr water droughts. Um, as a past mayor of Bayfield, I was a part of the drought, pan the drought master plan for the town. So I'm a true believer in not just only preparing for today, but we need to prepare for tomorrow. And it's super important to have everything set in line and have it in line to know what we need to do in order to protect the citizens of the county and uh, be there and be prepared. It's all about being prepared. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. In Bayfield, we're known to have, we go through our plans. We are set, land, land use code, master plan, broadbed plan, drought plan. Um, we have been staying ahead of the game and that's where I wanna be as a little product county commissioner is be prepared. Well, thank you. Well, 
Um, we actually going to we can wrap up and um, let you have the three minutes for the closing statement. And again, I appreciate your time. So, um, with that, um, I will let you have your closing statement. I think I lost you there on the audio, but uh, hopefully you can hear me. So, you know, the, my ending statement is: is during my time as mayor, we've achieved we have achieved a lot for the town including a water sewer master plan, land use code, Mill Street revitalization, which started our block parties, which are amazing, please attend for next year, um, which help also help attract three new businesses on Mill Street, our park master plan to help guide our, uh, the direction for our future of our parks, recycling, bear resistant trash, can trash containers throughout the whole town, a new water plant, at no additional cost to residents, and most importantly, transparency. As the mayor, I felt it was crucial that residents of Bayfield had access to our meetings. So I helped create a Facebook page for the town, new website with new branding, and I now, we, they now video record and stream all of their board meetings. I wanna take that experience and bring it to the county commissioner's job so I can have a positive impact across La Plata County. These experiences have taught me how to make meaningful progress. I wanna be a La Plata County Commissioner so I can keep the county moving in a direction so all residents can enjoy the place that we call a home. My key issues and not limited to is affordable and attainable housing, quality jobs and infrastructure improvements. What's best for La Plata County? Let's work together as a team. This is your county and I wanna hear your voice. I want to express my gratitude to the Durango Chamber of Commerce and to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with the citizens of La Plata County. Again, I'm Matt Salka and I'm running for County Commissioner District 3. Thank you, everyone. And I know I asked the other candidates, what's your website? My website is mattsalka.com. Mattsalka.com. Yes, easy enough. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 even I can remember that one. <laughs> Well, Matt, Definitely. Thank you again for your time and appreciate uh, um, your running. And uh, um, as I say to everybody on all our Zoom meetings, stay safe. And uh, if again you want to register for anything with the Chamber of Commerce, simply go to DurangoBusiness.org. And everybody, have a great day. Wear your mask, wash your hands. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.